Well, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, Craig and Maureen, uh, the OIS team, and the organizers, Paul and others, for putting this meeting on. And I just think it is so appropriate because as you listen to Paul's earlier comments, the reality is the future of innovation in eye care has to include op optometry. And so I just think it's appropriate that OIS is here and, and really talking about innovation in this forum. So I'm excited to share about Theroptics, where we are developing a drug-eluting bandage contact lens platform. And uh, our mission at Theroptics is to revolutionize drug delivery via a novel proprietary drug-eluting contact lens platform where we can provide more effective, sustained, and safer therapies for patients. Our first two assets in develop are the Tetra lens, which is focused on post-operative pain, and Dexa lens for PVR. A little bit about Theroptics. Uh, we were formed uh, with the strong IP estate that was developed by clinician and academic scientists at Boston Children's, Harvard's Mass Eye and Ear, and MIT. And our focus is really on the large unmet needs in post-surgical pharma delivery. So think of the drugs that patients need after surgery. That's the focus of our drug delivery platform. The company was formed with a convertible note. Uh, currently, we actually, as of today, now have $4 million in in that convertible note. We will actually grow that to $4.5 million and actually are in taking investments from qualified investors. Uh, if you're interested, we'd love to have more optometry people involved. We do have already, even though we are taking seed money, um, two marquee investors involved in the ophthalmology sector, uh, venture capital firms Blue Stem and Ramanchi, as well as several high uh, visible uh, KOLs in the eye care world. Uh, one of them you probably know well is a, a guy named Dick Lindstrom, is uh, one of our lead investors as well. And we're focused in an area where surveys have indicated that 93% of physicians are willing to use a drug eluding bandage contact lens platform if one is available. So a little bit about our technology. We are using a non-refractive bandage therapeutic lens composed of methylphilicon A and a drug polymer. And if you, as you can see here on the slide, the um, drug polymer, that blue area, is in the periphery of the contact lens. And so with our lead asset, tetra, tetra Lens, that polymer film contains tetracaine. The drug polymer ring is in the periphery, and it's completely encapsulated within the hydrogel lens to provide sustained release therapy. And the engineering behind this, uh, one of our founders, Dan Kahani, a drug delivery expert, um, developed this so that you can design polymers to deliver the drug uh, release profile needed for that particular indication. With the Tetra lens, the drug load is equivalent to less than actually three drops of 1% tetracaine. So you have a very limited amount of tetracaine in the, in the lens so you can maintain safety. With DexaLens, the focus there is PVR, and we actually have already received orphan status from the FDA for that product. With these, our intention is that these lenses are always physician administered, and so these are not patient administered, thereby eliminating that potential area of challenge for the product. So with TetraLens, our focus is on the unmet needs and post-operative pain. Pain and discomfort are really key issues in advanced surface ablation procedures. You think of PRK especially as an area where that's a big problem. Also, uh, an, an emerging procedure, cross-linking, um, where we can stop the progression of keratoconus. Uh, that also has uh, removal of the epithelium that creates a lot of post-surgical pain. Limitations with drops, which uh, you all are probably very well uh, aware of. The market potential for Tetra Lens is quite large. If you look at just the surface ablation, um, PTK, cross-linking areas, uh, we believe that there's potential for over 250 million peak revenues for Tetra Lens alone. Strong, diverse board of directors, um, Dick Lindstrom, Adrian Graves, uh, Tyler Stillwater is from Blue Stem, and then our two founders, uh, Dan Kahani and Joe Cialino, make up that team. I also will point out that two of our, our critical advisors for our company are Joe Barr, who is a leading uh, optometrist consultant uh, in the eye care world, and Omid, uh, Dr. Omid Kodai, who is an optometrist now working in industry in the clinical regulatory world, two key uh, advisors for us. Well, the big thing I'm excited to share with, share with you about um, is our LPFOS study, the first uh, proof of concept study for our product where we've had 20 patients post-PRK surgery receive the Tetra lens, bandage contact lens in one eye, and a standard bandage contact lens in the other eye. These surgeries were done one at a time, 
one week apart to fully isolate the pain measurements. Pain and comfort were measured every hour for the first eight hours, and then day one through six using the OPAS questionnaire. So that's the ocular pain assessment survey. At day one through six, all of the Tetra lens and all the standard lenses were centered and comfortable in all the patients. So here's uh, the data um, that you can see here. And so this is an abbreviated hour one, four, eight, and then day one, two, and three. Uh, you can see the Tetra lens uh, on the left of each of those time uh, is zero pain. All 20 of those patients were pain-free during the entire post-operative recovery period for PRK. You can see the standard bandage contact lens there and the, and the pain results on that zero to 10 scale. Those patients also uh, received high-dose NSAIDs um, for the first four days after surgery. So those pain numbers include um, them taking high-dose NSAIDs along the way. So we're very excited to have this initial signal that Tetra Lens is highly effective. Um, we're looking forward uh, into 2023 to grow this. Uh, we'll be launching a Series A that will fund the IND submission and, and following clinical trials, hopefully a phase two study. Um, we wanna expand our market research with physicians, patients, and payers. We do have some patents that we need to file to extend the IP. We've done a lot of, of development over the last two years. And then we're gonna be building a, an MAB with, with KOLs to guide the next steps. And I, I think Paul's comments are right on that optometry has to be a key part of that. So uh, if you're interested in learning more, please do um, look me up or send me an email. And I appreciate the opportunity again to share a little bit about Theroptics and what we're doing. Have a good day. Thank you.